This afternoon, we have just such an opportunity as former School of Computing and Engineering student John Carmack joins us to share his words uh, of wisdom from his own professional experience. John is a renowned luminary in computer science, a field where he has altered the landscape. He's the founder of an ID software, uh, of ID software in Armadillo Aerospace. He's worked in Armadillo Aerospace as a rocket ship designer. I know that rocket ship term was kind of dated, but I think it's appropriate for that operation. Now, he's, uh, in 2012, John ushered in a new era of virtual reality, leading to his current position of Chief Technology Officer of Oculus, a Facebook company. He was inducted into the Academy of Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame in 2001 awarded two Emmys for his work in graphics technology in 2006 and 2007, received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Game Develop Del Developers Choice Awards in 2010, and in 2016 was awarded the prestigious British Academy of Film and Television Arts Fellowship Award. In addition to hearing his words of wisdom today, we are privileged to recognize John with the Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa. John, please join me to receive your honorary degree. So this is almost a bit of a cliche by now, the college dropout that goes on to do good in tech, coming back to give a commencement speech at his alma mater. But I am honored to be here, and I always thought kindly of UMKC for allowing me to ignore prerequisites and graduation requirements to take nothing but computer science courses for the one year that I did attend here. So to lay my biases out up front, I self-identify as an engineer closely allied with scientists and entrepreneurs, but fundamentally what motivates me is the ability to solve problems or create value by actually building things. And I think this is the best time ever in the history of the world to be an engineer. But interestingly, I thought the exact same thing 25 years ago. When I left Kansas City, I remember having a conversation with a bunch of friends and I was so effusively optimistic that they accused me of sounding like a late night TV motivational speaker. And we've come so far since then. You know, I, my back in the day stories are about having a single technical reference book for graphics and building projects by swapping floppy disks. I feel privileged to work in the world of today with the internet at my fingertips where I can follow any crazy idea as far down the rabbit hole as I care to, no matter where I am or what type of day or night it is. And today, you can do class projects that have capabilities that nobody on earth could have done a few decades ago. Train a neural net, crawl the web for data, deploy on the cloud. These are amazing things. I also think that right now, is an especially historic period as computers are beginning to learn to see and understand the world around them. And this is gonna shape the world of the future. So computing is obviously wonderful. We've seen factors of millions in capabilities that have gone just in the time that I've been working with things. And this is unprecedented really in any other human endeavor. It just hasn't happened like that. But the progress hasn't been just in the land of bits and bytes. I, Last year, I heard someone call me the pioneer of the vanity rocket companies. And that's a little snarky, but I'm happy to take that because the fact that we can have enterprises today that somebody could call a vanity rocket ship company is really pretty amazing. So these are things that not long ago was the domain of just a handful of nation states, but now we have engineer-led companies that are just going off and doing that. So we have the spectacle of rocket ships landing on tails of fire straight out of a Heinlein novel, 
We have 3D printers using lasers to fabricate impossible to machine shapes. We have genome editing. We have self-driving cars starting to be tested in the wild. You know, the future is here, and it's really awesome. So there are lots of viable paths through engineering. The path that I advocate for is knowledge in depth, for knowing things really deeply. It's possible that I'm a little bit of a dinosaur here, and this might even be suboptimal advice to listen to. I, I mean, it's true that the modern wizardry of building amazing applications by bashing together a bunch of JavaScript libraries and web services you know, has indeed minted a lot of startup millionaires. But it does remind me of Mickey Mouse as the sorcerer's apprentice in Fantasia, animating broomsticks with magic that he doesn't really understand and eventually making a really big mess. So knowing how to pull the levers of power is rewarding, but there's a satisfaction in really understanding how they work and knowing things very deeply. And there's also a great confidence you can have when you know that you could build something from scratch, even if you choose not to. So almost everything that we work with has really great depths to explore. Now you can't know everything, but you should look at this as you can know anything. Anything that you turn your attention to, that you choose to focus on, you can understand. Nothing is magic, and you can tear things apart if you need to to find the details. Now, knowing all the details can have some consequences, because sometimes the details are really ugly or even frightening to think about. And this can lead to people thinking, no, things aren't awesome. They're actually horrible if you look at it. And there are some strong senior engineers that can take sort of a darkly cynical view of this. But I take the more optimistic view that this means that there's tons of opportunities. Especially with the exponential growth of Moore's Law slowing down, being able to dig deep into our systems and find efficiencies there is one of the ways that we can continue delivering significant value. Now to really understand the details, you have to understand history. Many times things are the way they are for important and valid historical reasons. But sometimes things are the way they are because we just didn't know any better or because we didn't have time to actually make something good. There's also value in understanding the roads not taken because the landscape has changed so much that factor of millions change in capabilities. That means that many times things that might even have been optimal originally no longer are and there are better ways to do things. So in many areas, it's almost received wisdom that you shouldn't reinvent the wheel. But I would urge you to occasionally try anyways. You'll be better for the effort, and this is how eventually we get better wheels, by people just going ahead and trying. And so whatever path you're on, I advocate for long, hard work. You hear a lot about work-life balance, working smarter, not harder, and that's all fine. But there's a quality to obsession that is really hard to match any other way. Sometimes important insights come only from a total immersion in a problem or field. And even when the work is mundane, there's value that you can extract from that. Mastery comes from practice. And even if you're doing the same boring thing for the 50th time, if you're self-aware about it, you can sort of hill climb your way to better skill set by working on it. So, I urge you to embrace the grind, pay attention to the details, fill your products with give a damn. You're building the future. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.